mother. Who are you? Why are you here? I am Dr. Thomas Kruvayan, and this is my assistant, Dr. Andreas Gorovic. And, uh, well, you know who I am. I was walking in the park when I heard a shot. You must excuse us for taking the liberty of entering the chapel. We thought it was only an abandoned ruin. Everything is ruined now. Did you ever have the feeling you were being watched? Rise, Yabuto. Yabuto. Rise, Yabuto. Father, help me. <laughs> hey, pretty mama. <laughs> if these packs don't cheer you up, nothing will. Darkness has parted me from you, and all I feel is a thirst for blood. No! What do you think you're doing? Don't you realize this means war? I'm getting my butt barbecued! Hey, Blackie, any more babes in there? father wasn't delirious and his last words were the devil's waiting let's go in you stay here Ivan make sure the door doesn't close keep your eyes open yes my lord what a maroon <laughs> what an ignoramus <laughs> it's the same girl as the portrait near the fireplace the witch in the crypt you know, those guys in there think I'm crazy. And I am, too. <laughs> well, you geriatric twit, I don't think that's what they had in mind when they said, keep your eyes open. Pardon the intrusion, folks, but uh, I simply couldn't resist the temptation. Yvonne here has had disposable old fart written all over him ever since he first appeared on screen. And, well, to be blunt, I felt that someone had to do something to move the plot along, and taking the choke chain to this inept old watchdog should just about do the trick. Well, which uh, bug-eyed brunette are you rooting for? I must admit... I have rather a soft spot in my grinchy old heart for the resurrected from the dead babe. Ah, ah. I genuinely respect and admire the quality of evil intent in all of my female companions. <laughs> Last you're here, I've been waiting for you. I need you again. Just a few drops of your blood brought me to life. Embrace me. Quite a turn on. Even if they do spend their leisure time 
laying about in dingy, run-down old crypts uh, with uh, scorpions infesting their eye sockets. Well, if you'll excuse me, I must be off. I, uh, I have to gather a Black Sunday bouquet of uh, rose thorns, uh, poison ivy, and moon blossoms for my lady love. Ta-ta. Yvonne, even in death, you're still only good for cluttering up the set. You didn't know that you were born for this moment. You didn't know that your life had been consecrated to me by the devil. But you sensed it. You sensed it, didn't you? That's why my portrait had a strange meaning to you. Why it frightened you. You felt that your life and your body were mine. You felt like me because you were destined to become me. Useless body without life. The love that young man had for you could have saved you. Do you know that? He might have brought help for you. But I was stronger. And now you will lead such a beautiful life of evil and hate in me. <gasps> now let's not get nosy, bub. Pictures, eh? Oh, yeah? Listen, you. If you was my size, I'd bust you right in the dirt. <laughs> well, that'll be quite enough of that, I'm sure. I hope you intolerant cretins are properly satisfied. You've got to barbecue the witch, after all. Killjoys. Uh, this has put rather a nasty crimp in my plans for the evening. I had intended to escort Asa to Mr. Chin's Players Ball, held bi-weekly at the Spudmore Hotel. Ah, uh, I'm sure she would have caught more than a few eyes there, then had them for hors d'oeuvres even if she was sporting the Calissa Flockhart look beneath that designer cloak. Oh, I have rather an important correction to make in my production notes from the beginning of the show. It seems that the director's last name is properly pronounced Bava, not Brava. My dumbass producers insist, Well, uh... The guy on American Movie Classics pronounced it Bravo. Well, who are you going to believe? Me? Or George Clooney's senile old father, hmm? Ah, right, I thought so. Well, I see by the old clock in the crypt that we're just about out of time. But uh, before we go, I'd like to present a new feature here on SHT. <coughs> Uh, the end of each program, we'd like to pay a heartfelt dedication we like to call Horror Hosts Millennium Moments. Tonight, we pay homage to a true master in his own time, a giant of the industry who came to be known as the most sinister man to ever crawl on the face of the earth. In the early 1970s, Los Angeles area viewers witnessed the transformation of an obscure character actor named Larry Vincent into a true master of the macabre. Every Saturday night, Seymour presided over a double feature of vintage horror films. He brought to those broadcasts a distinctive brand of irreverent humor, delivered with a trademark sarcastic flair, which quickly earned the affection and admiration of his many devoted fans. And if you were one of his fringes, you knew that he always called them as he saw them. He regularly ended each show by wishing his audience a bad evening, but it never was whenever Seymour graced the airwaves. Well, how truly touching. My, I have a, a bit of a lump in my throat. Mr. Carpenter, play me out.